Hey, what's up everybody? Who is ready for a thriller of a math question? Here we're looking to connect Gibbs free energy change, equilibrium constant, and cell potential. Assume that aluminum and zinc half cells are suitably connected at 298 Kelvin in standard conditions and that both aqueous solutions are 1.00 molar concentrations. So, standard conditions. We're given a couple of reduction potentials. We're asked to calculate the cell potential for the voltaic cell. Alright, we're at we need to suitably connect to create a voltaic or spontaneous cell. So, as I look at my two reduction potentials, I have to decide which of them am I going to reverse to be oxidized. Remember, the more positive the reduction potential, the more likely it is to be reduced. So between zinc ion and aluminum ion, zinc ion is more likely to be reduced. Which means that aluminum is more likely to be oxidized than zinc. So, we're going to keep the zinc half reaction exactly as it is. We're going to keep the reduction potential exactly as it is. We're going to reverse the second equation. We're going to change our sign to positive 1.66 volts. We're going to sum our equations together, but before we do, notice that zinc is showing gaining two electrons, aluminum losing three. So let's multiply this equation by three and our oxidation half reaction by two. Now we're gaining and losing the same number of electrons Keep in mind that I'm not multiplying my potentials. When I combine the equation, I'll cancel out my electrons. We end up with this for our overall reaction for the voltaic cell. The cell potential for this reaction should be positive if we've done it correctly. Negative 0.76 plus positive 1.66. Be careful with significant figures here. 0 0.90 volts. And it's positive, which we would expect. So boom, we have calculated the cell potential for the voltaic cell. Our next step is to calculate the free energy change for the cell. Well, remember, we can calculate the Gibbs free energy change from the cell potential by using this equation. Plug in some numbers. This is why it's so important to balance your equation for charge. Our total number of moles of electrons is six moles that were transferred. Faraday's constant, 96,500 coulombs per mole, times my cell potential, positive 0 0.90 volts, also known as joules per coulomb. Calculator time. Negative 6 times 96,500, enter, times 0 0.90, enter. Delta G equals negative 5.2 times 10 to the 5 joules. Boom. Quick note about sig figs. Notice that I'm not using my number of moles of electrons when it comes to determining sig figs. Moles of electrons is a counted number and it won't factor into our number of sig figs used in calculations. Check this one off the list. Finally, calculate the equilibrium constant for this reaction. All right, so remember, delta G is related to the equilibrium constant using this equation. I know the value for delta G is negative 5.2 times 10 to the 5 joules. That's equal to negative times my R constant of 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. Again, be careful, there are a lot of R values on your formula chart. My temperature in Kelvin is 298 times the natural log of my equilibrium constant, which is what I'm solving for. All right, so let's math it up a little bit. I'm going to take my value for delta G, divide it by negative 1, enter. Divide that by 8.314, enter. Divide that by 298, enter. What I end up with, 210 is equal to the natural log of K, our equilibrium constant. Be careful here if you're shaky on your math. In order to isolate K, we're going to do second natural log. See this that little e exponential. e 210 to the 210 equals our equilibrium constant. Enter. Woo! Our equilibrium constant is really large here. We get 1.6 times 10 to the 91. No units with our equilibrium constant. Boom. We are done. Things to think about though before we go. We have a positive cell potential which means that this reaction as written is spontaneous. So we should expect a negative delta G value and an equilibrium constant that's larger than one, indicating favorability of product formation. Tying it all together, science plus math. Thank you, Josiah Willard Gibbs.